comparison between 1991 and today, that there is a do or die, you know, compulsion, and that always focuses uh, people's minds. Now, of course, in 1991, uh, the structure of the government was quite different. Uh, the, the, it did not have a majority, so there was a, a political balancing act that had to be carried out. But let's not forget when, because the crisis was so visible, was so vivid, that that didn't matter. You know, the, the getting the, the sort of consensus didn't, wasn't too difficult. This time around, it may be a little more difficult to get the consensus, but that's offset by the fact that the government really doesn't have to worry about political uh, compromises. So I think that's a very positive sign. I think the recognition that, uh, that some give some flexibility in the labor arrangement, the labor regulations, is necessary. I mean, it's not going to solve the problem entirely, but it's necessary to get the ball rolling. Without it, all other solutions would have ended up you know, being very marginal. So Rajasthan, I think, is setting a very, very important precedent in two ways. One, it is actually carrying out the reform or proposing to carry out the reform. The second is it is testing the the federal arrangement by actually, in a sense, absolving the central government of going through the hoops of making this reform. Uh, and if it does that successfully, then it opens up the whole, uh, you know, every state will start to see this as an opportunity. I'm going to go back to what you said about uh, the 1991 crisis-like situation right now. Uh, I think in 1991, everyone sort of realized that there was a crisis. Um, even the public, right, because uh, sort of uh, sending gold out of the country, which, which, which was a very, very symbolic kind of thing, especially to a country like India where people place so much emphasis on gold. Uh, do you think this similar realization of how close we are to the chasm right now? Or? Well, I don't think the, the situation is in that direct sense comparable. I don't think it's a matter of, you know, falling over the precipice in the way that we were two weeks worth of uh, two weeks worth of imports in forex reserves and so on i think what pe but people's benchmarks have changed that's very important uh, in 1991 if you ask people about growth rates and so on i mean this would not actually figure in anybody's consciousness it wouldn't look bad, it wouldn't look bad yeah nobody would say you know it'd be badly off but but the fact of a a foreign exchange crisis, the fact of a food crisis, I think those were much more vivid. The first uh, term of uh, the UPA, when uh, the economy grew at over 9%, thanks to which you know the entire 10-year period, their average looked pretty good. Uh, what went right for India in that period? A oh, number of factors. Uh, firstly, the, there was a huge global tailwind. The average rate of growth of the global economy in that five-year period was twice what it has been in the subsequent five-year period. So about 4.2, 4.3 compared to you know, 2.3, 2.4. Uh, so that was a powerful force. India was globalizing, was integrating much uh, better. And all of the indicators I mentioned that are, have deteriorated were actually very strong then. We had a very good fiscal position improving consistently over that period because of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, because of much improved tax uh, administration, because of the introduction of service taxes, which was a you know, very important sort of balancing factor on, in terms of the fiscal burden or the tax burden. Uh, we had uh, the balance of payments looking extremely positive. Three out of those five years, we had a current account surplus because of the contribution of the IT you know, sector uh, coming in at that point. So the rupee was very, was appreciating because we had lots of capital flows. That's a separate debate. Was that the right thing? Was that the wrong thing? But it was stable. I think that was very important. There was no currency risk uh, on the downside. Uh, and investment picked up because public and private complemented each other. Uh, you've seen uh, this government now at work for 30 days. And uh, like you mentioned, there's been some Rajasthan's actually done something with labor. The central government has also made some noises about labor. Uh, there's been this uh, a clear establishment of at least some sort of decision-making protocol, which was almost entirely absent when the UPA was there. Um, so what, what's your sense? Do you think uh, the current government will go out and do some of the tough things that need to be done? Well, I think uh, you have... Uh a menu of, of choices here. Uh, there are some things that will pay off quite quickly. 
uh, I think for example, a budget which, which sort of sends a clear signal on tax reform, on some of the subsidy capping, uh, on larger commitments to, to CapEx. The, obviously, the outcomes will play out over time, but it's a commitment. I think that's important. Uh, on some of these other issues, like on food procurement, we've already seen an increase in the procurement price of rice. Uh, it's very modest. It's like 1.6% yeah, compared to an aggregate of about close to 90% over the last five years. So this is, in a sense, a relief. But uh, it does not then suggest in and of itself that there's a rethink on the whole incentive system. So, you know, do we need to wait and watch as to how that is going to play out? If they do at least some of these things that we've been talking about, do you think we could see 7% growth, say, two, two and a half years from now? I think so. I think a three-year horizon uh, is a seven is not an unreasonable expectation, provided that you know all of these cylinders uh, start to fire. Uh, eight and a half, nine was achieved in a very favorable global environment, which is not there. So I think you have to shave some of that expectation off. And uh, we've we've sort of uh, you know we're going to be dealing with uh, energy prices that are in relative terms significantly higher than they were in that in that high growth phase so we're going to have to take some of that into account uh, so there are some headwinds uh, you know which will constrain an acceleration but with enough uh, things being done seven is not an unrealistic proposition maybe if not three years you know over a five year horizon i think uh, achieving that but it's going to be an upward climb which is where the confidence will come from